Hello, my name is Mike Gabin and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, Val's uh, valiant first flight netted us 20 science points, which clearly I need to spend now. Uh, and I think one of them definitely has to be here, Engineering 101. Uh, gives us another science part, a Geiger counter, oh, solar panels. Oh, barometer as well, more science and a bit of a ladder part, so that's just five science. So that leaves us with 15 more. That's going to be research. It's going to take five days to research that. Uh, oh, eight, okay. 18. Are all of these 18? Alright, I have 15 points, but I need to spend... Yeah, all the whole next year cost 18. So, well, I guess I got to make myself some more science. So we'll get out of here. Now, one of the things I do have are these two contracts that I failed to achieve. So definitely, I think maybe our first plan is going to be uh, getting to those. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, boost up our Striker R3 rocket that, uh, unfortunately, I was forced to nerf last episode. So we'll get that up. We know that it is capable of accomplishing this. And then, well, you know what? I think I might get... Uh, a little bit of automation happening given some of the parts that we've unlocked recently but before we get to that let's take a look at Kerbal construction time we are recovering that is the plane that Val flew what else we got happening here we have fabrication yeah that's gonna take a day and that's gonna give us some good stuff so we definitely want to see that but well Let's get into the space plane hangar first, because I'm a, there's something I'm a little bit concerned about with this recovery of the of the Juno M1 our plane. So let's just warp to the end of that, and I'll explain what's kind of going on where where I'm a bit concerned. So we've recovered the plane. The plane is now in storage. We are now capable of just launching it, and yeah, these are the two buttons that I'm concerned with because one of them says launch. And I have to assume that that means launch as it was recovered. Now, of course, we flew a long mission. We went over a good part of this continent and used up most of the fuel in it. So I don't want to launch it with very little fuel left in it. But this one says fill tanks and launch. I'm a bit concerned about that one as well. But well, I got to click it because if what I think is going to happen happens, uh, we got a bit of a problem. Okay, here it is. And, yeah, it did exactly what it said. It filled the tanks. And the problem is that when I originally designed this, these two were really just used as fuselage parts with no fuel in them at all. The only fuel were in the Mark Zero cans down here on the side. And you can see that this is 50. So it's 50. That's 100 on this side, 100 units of fuel on this side. This adds an additional 800 units of fuel that this thing was never tested for no I don't think it would be safe to attempt to fly it and I mentioned that I'm gonna try and play this without doing as few reverts as possible so putting this to the test right now would be a bad idea but I do have a plan that I think I think there's a simple thing I can do to fix this but in order to get started with the fix though I have to actually recover the vessel normally but that should put the vessel into what's thanks to the scrapyard mod into uh, uh, an inventory we should have these parts with us they just need to be refurbished a bit uh we're gonna go into the space plane hangar we're gonna do a little bit of redesign but this sh rebuilding this should be quicker all right so i think the simple fix to all of this is to sim oh i can see right here kerbal construction time today it's taking a little less than 10 days and i remember it took a lot longer than that the first time. in fact this is probably close to half the time it took before but we'll make some improvements number one is we're going to take out all of this fuel clearly whoops that's not a there we go but then i would think simply turning those fuel tanks off which means they shouldn't get filled up anymore it's a little oh that puts it back yeah I would think that should solve this problem. Now there's a couple other things I wanted to do. One is uh, take the monoprop out of the cockpit, which I never did, and the suspension. No, I think the suspension is good. Yeah, I think the suspension is good. 
Uh, I could wait for Engineering 101 because that will give me some more science. But you know what? No, let's let's push this puppy out as it is. Yeah, it's going to take less than 10 days. So we're going to save this as our new Judo M1. We're going to add these plans. We're going to go back out to here. And we're going to uh, construction time, of course. Plans, and we will space plate hangar. Add that. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit to build again. Uh, let's take a look at the VAB. We got nothing. Oh, we got a mallet sounding rocket. I'm not entirely convinced. I pushed this out because I thought I might as well. These are the really simple ones that I built right off the bat from the very first episode, but they are cheap and quick to build. But I honestly don't think they're going to do anything for me. Let's take a look at what science I have collected. Get this out of the way. Um, the mallet is not capable of getting into the high atmosphere. So let's take a look at what we have collected uh, flying low. That's what we're interested in. Actually, most specifically in the telemetry reports. Well, if I fired it over the grasslands, if I aimed it that way... I guess that would be all right. What about temperature scanning flying low? That I pretty much, of course I did, because that's what Val was doing. Okay, I'm not really sure it's that worth getting, it would be about another 1.2 science, I'm assuming. Or I could go over the water, I have no telemetry over the water. You know what, no, no, no. I'm gonna build that Striker R3, that is capable of doing it. Let's take a look at crew reports. I have a crew report flying at Kerbin. And then a crew report flying over. I did make some changes. We did a little bit of modification. I talked about this towards the end of last episode that um, Kerbalism sets the crew reports that it's not biome specific. I wonder why I don't have a crew report landed. Maybe I can't do crew reports landed. I don't know. But either way, um, with Kerbalism, crew reports are not biome specific but EVAs are, and I explained my reasoning behind that, and with a friend's suggestion, we, I'm gonna sw I switched those the other way around, so we should be able to now collect crew reports. That'd be a good mission for Jeb to do, to start collecting crew reports over different biomes around Kerbin. We'll worry about that later. Uh, let's get into designing then that Striker R3, so it can go and do some, finish off those two contracts that we have. For that, I do need some new tech, and I gotta research fabrication. So research fabrication, that'll just take a day. That will give us, finally, radial decouplers. That's the missing part that it's needed. All right, so this is our Striker R3. Should be fine now. I have made, uh, between the two episodes, some improvements to it. So let's talk about the improvements that I have made. One is these decouplers, they're actually I go to where decouplers are. Um, these were the decouplers there were there before. These ones, oh, I gotta pay for them. A thousand. <laughs> uh, these are the ones that are used before that I tested, but they're the bigger ones. Uh, these are smaller ones. TT14 radial decouplers. I think these again come with the uncurbled, start to give us some decouplers that are more in scale with these 0.625 meter boosters, so that's good. Uh, other thing that I have done, well, I added some nose cones onto the top to help improve aerodynamics. I've also added some tail fins. These are the smallest ones I can make out of the uh, Type D wing parts and a control surface. So that gives us the ability to actually steer this thing. Imagine that. And now that we have some control, I thought I would get into some automation. So one of the things that I added under control now we have some options and one of them is this guy. These are smart parts. Smart parts are great for doing uh, simple automations. What they do is they look for certain events to happen and then you can, once that event happens, you can use that to trigger further events. And the one I got on here is this guy, the DrainX1 fuel sensor. So we'll pay for that one so I can actually use it legitimately. And it is on here on the side. There it is there. And let's take a look at this. So this is a fuel sensor. And what it's doing is it's sensing the amount of solid fuel that is in this radio booster. When that gets down to zero, it's going to 
uh, activated an action group. In this case, the action group is going to activate is stage. So what this means is, is when this booster goes empty, it will stage and I don't have to do it. This is my whole attempt to try and see, I don't know, I take personal, I love the fact of building rockets that you hit the space bar and they just kind of fly themselves. I find this automation thing really nice. Now, uh, in the attempt at further automation, this is a part I ignored before. This is the um, KOS, Kerbal Operating System, the KR2042B scriptable control system. It's basically a little computer, a little CPU. We're going to tuck that right into here. And this is going to allow us to do some scripting. We're going to use some KOS. Why is it not letting me pick that up? There it is, finally. Stick you in there. We're going to do a little bit of scripting. And we're going to start simple. So what this allows us to do is uh, allows us to, uh, well, run some run some programs, write some programs that allow it to run in here. This has disk space. It has 5,000 bytes of disk space. You can increase the amount of disk space, but you do that by increasing the amount of mass. We do not need for our simple script that I got in mind. Um, even that much is way too much. So this is going to be our new striker. We're going to save that one and we're going to put it to the test and we're going to talk a little bit about KOS. So we're going to run a simulation. I wrote this simple uh, script to try and get into a suborbital trajectory. And I've yet to test it, though, on this rocket. So we're going to see how this works. <laughs> I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. But then again, um, Unforeseen events are part of what this game is about, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to open up the KOS terminal. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about KOS right now. Come on. Because, um, well, this is a simulation and it's costing me money. So I'm going to go straight to the, t and, uh, to the chase here. We're going to do a run path command. And we're going to run... Uh, the file is stored at zero slash, uh, it is called, what is it called? Basic sub orbit. I am hopefully correct. And that needs to be in quotation marks. Let's try that again. Basic sub orbit and end with a period and go. And it is off. Close some windows here. So there it goes. It seems to be going the wrong way. <laughs> ah, what joy! Why is that happening? Okay. I have no idea why that is happening. So we are going to revert. This is going to cost me some money. Uh, we have to restart the simulation. Hopefully this fix will be simple. I'm not quite sure why this happened. Something funky happened and I don't know what. This is not the program I wrote. This is not the program I wrote. Okay, I'm going to have to start stop the video. And figure out what went wrong and I will get back to you. You know, running in simulation mode to test your rocket is one thing, but using it to debug code, now that's going to get way too expensive to me. So what I ended up doing is just took this rocket, put it into a sandbox mode, used that to test the code, figured out what was going on. For some reason, it was using an old version of the program. A, a, a very I don't know exactly how that happened. There was one other slight problem as well, is the tiny amount of mass that this little sensor puts on here, this smart part, uh, what is the mass of that thing, by the way? 50 kilograms, I guess it's not that tiny, but on this rocket, that 50 kilograms on this side was enough to skew it uh, to all the way around. So I had to actually put three of these um, 
smart parts on here to balance it that that's what caused it to skew off in the wrong direction and again running a bad program but anyway that is all sorted out and uh, so what we're gonna do we're gonna save this we're gonna add it to our plans we're going to exit here and uh, when we launch it for real a little bit later in this episode I'll talk in detail where I don't have the simulation costs running up I'll talk in detail about uh, KOS and running programs and all that kind of stuff but in the meantime let's go to plans and we'll go to the VAB and we will push that striker into the building queue and that's going to take 12 days to build I don't know if there's a sense to this mallet I don't think it can do anything for me so I'm going to scrap it return some money if I redesigned it I could put some it's not a bad idea. I could redesign it so it can steer it over the grasslands or something like that. Put some control surfaces on that. Uh, because what I have been doing is in the VAB, I, I've been putting... Oh, i got to go to upgrades, of course. I've been putting in points into a second... Oh, wait a sec. Okay, I didn't show this in the video, but I thought I was putting some points into a second construction bay in the VAB because I figure pretty soon I'll be liking to build multiple rockets oh crap okay I put those points into a second construction bay in the space plane hangar oh this is a day for stupid <laughs> oh no uh, you can see with the second construction bay, you actually get more bang for your upgrade points by making a second bay. So it does encourage you to do that, but oh my gosh, it's going to be a long time before I have more than one plane being built at the same time. This is pretty much a waste, and I put three construction points to it. I can reset for two of these upgrade points. Considering this is a waste, I think that'd be worth it. Unfortunately, right now I only have one, so I gotta unlock another node. That'll give me two. I can up reset, fix this up, get a second service bay going in the view. Oh my crepes. Okay. <clears throat> I'll put some thought into that. Okay, what do we got happening? Engineering 101 is coming up in just over four days, so or under four days, so let's do that. And then what's going to happen first? Am I going to get my striker first, or am I going to get my plane first? Ooh, the suspense. It's killing me. It's going to be... Three, two, one... Bunk! The plane! Okay, so just under five days for the plane. Okie dokie. Yep, let's do that. And we're going to put Jeb in the plane, and the whole idea of this is going to be doing... Crew reports! Do not worry, since this is something you actually saw a lot of last episode, we won't spend too much time with it. Starting off with the shores here, and then we're going to just visit all the same biomes that Val did last episode. Water, grasslands, mountains, highlands, and deserts. And this really is all completely routine, though it did end up costing me a smidge more than what I anticipated. Oh, why is this a sim? What the hell? Okay, something weird happened there. Why on earth? Okay, now now I'm not simming. Okay. Um All right. <laughs> it was running a simulation there oh my god that's okay 1.9 flying low per report good 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 let's uh, head out over the water that should be another crew report I do not know what happened there for some strange reason I was still in sim mode must not have terminated the simulation properly before. Wasted some money on a unnecessary simulation. Well, despite that, the rest of our mission went fine. We hit our targets in the other biomes. 
Though at the end of this, I didn't put the plane into storage. Instead, I brought it back into the space plane hangar because now I have Engineering 101 and that unlocks two new science parts, the Geiger counter and the press mat barometer. I most certainly do want them. Though the adding of these two extra parts ended up having me run into what should have been a predictable limitation. Beautiful. Okay, and we shall save that. Update our plans. Warning, this vessel did not pass the editor check. What? Okay. Why is it? Oh, we got too many parts. Oh, oh, we're running into that. Okay, uh, we're down to one battery. We don't even really need the battery, to be quite honest. No, it's not. We'll stick the battery here. All right, we are running into our part limit. Jeepers, creepers. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay, now we'll save that. And add that to our plan. There we go. I gotta start thinking about upgrading some buildings. I don't think... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not like I got lots and lots and lots of money. What does it cost to upgrade the space plane hangar? 337500 Oh, dear. And the VAB? The same. Oh, boy. Okay, we gotta do some contracts. <laughs> But now with 26.6 science, I get to unlock my first tier three node and well, I got lots of options here. This is going to be a difficult choice, but let's start adding parachutes. Parachutes, 18 days for that. Okay, uh, that though does give me in Kerbal Construction time two build points. Yes, I do. So I can now reset my upgrade. So I want the space plane hangar to be at 0.5. I want the vehicle assembly building at 0.6 and 0.3. R&D at one science a day. Okay, let's see where we're at. So, uh, reset. Okay, uh, this was at 0.6. This should be at point three. Space plane hangar. I've already forgotten. <laughs> oh, how long until we built the Juno? Yeah, that's clearly. Let's do this until it's reasonable. Point five. Let's do that. R and D. Science per day. It was at just one science a day? 17 days? No, we're going to go more than that. That's eight. That seems good. Space plane hangar. 10 days for that Juno. Four days for the striker. You still got one point. Let's save. Let's save it. Save it, save it, save it. Uh, what we're going to do, go back into this vehicle assembly building. I'm going to take advantage of that second service bay. We're going to modify our very first rocket, the mallet. And what I want to do is I just want to add on some control surfaces so I can actually direct this thing. Now it's not, I'm not putting on any other science parts because the Juno, our little plane, is going to be better for collecting that low altitude science and this thing will be. This is just about getting cheap telemetry reports over nearby biomes. And after discovering that it flew fine, I pushed this into the second construction bay. So the mallet's going to be built in seven days. This guy's going to be built in four. Space plane hangar, ten days for the Juno. Tech is going to take eight days for survivabilities and parachutes. Uh, let's put our final upgrade point then into the second bay of the vehicle assembly building. There we go. 
And let's get that striker. And finally, we'll talk. Yes, this will give us an opportunity to finally talk about KOS, which is what I really want to talk about. And we'll hopefully, finally, get rid of these two stupid contracts that have been hanging over my head since last episode. Okay, here we are now. Uh, let's start by talking about KOS. So, yes. So, we're going to open up. There's a little button here, and that ter brings us our KOS terminal. And we'll talk about... Let's talk, first of all, about some of the file control things. I think these take a little bit to get used to. So, uh, first of all, we have one called list. And that lists all the program by the way every command ends with a period so we gotta end with a period list this is also um case insensitive so whether you're like uppercase lowercase that's a personal choice to you all the commands in kos are case insensitive but let's go list and what it does is it lists all the files that are currently stored in the hard drive of this little cpu that's built in right here the um R3 CPU and there's nothing there of course we have our 5,000 bits of our bytes of available data now we have this KOS refers to these things as volume so we are now in volume one but there is also an archive uh, volume which is volume zero so we're gonna type switch to zero period and we're now in volume zero. Volume zero is considered to be the mainframe of the KSC. Uh, in That's in game. In reality, it's a folder <laughs> on your computer, of course, and uh, where, where all of your programs are being kept. So if I type list here, these are the programs that we have. We have a boot directory you can get to. You can actually, well, deal with that's I'm getting over it. but I have a launch script this is a launch script I made years ago that um, that uh, I, well it's what it is right I don't want to use it yet because I think it's a bit too advanced I want to do a simple one so I, I wrote this basic sub orbit dot K -A -K -S. all of the uh, files are K with the subscript KS Actually, there's a KMS, we'll get to that later. So what I want to do is I want to copy this file onto this guy here. So we're going to switch back to zero. No, no, one now. That is our rocket. And then we're going to copy path. We want to copy the file. It's in zero uh, and it's called basic sub orbit remember the up uh, the uh, case doesn't matter it you don't have to put the extension ks on there it will automatically assume that and i want to copy it to here which is just a blank string like that period at the end boom now if i do list now i should have yes i now have my basic sub orbit here now you can actually run programs from the archive but to me that feels, I mean, it's fine for testing, but to me it feels a little bit cheaty. I don't know why, because then you're not, to me it's like you're you're bypassing the fact that you have limited storage space on your rocket. So I think program should be loaded onto your rocket. Okay, now before we run this thing, let's take a look at it. So we can do edit, basic sub orbit. And we get a new window down here. Let's move all of this up make this a little bigger right there we go okay and this is the actual program we're gonna go over it it's built out of a few very simple commands uh, you can actually edit in this view and save it uh, be very careful about what volume you are in if I make any changes here it will save the version of the program that's stored in this rocket but not the one that's in the archive so be a bit of conscious of that though for the most part I think most people myself included would rather build these things in an external text editor and then just simply save the file to the appropriate folder um, but we'll do that anyway we've got you know basic description and and stuff like that so this thing's gonna do very little it's gonna uh, execute a primary ignition and launch it will pitch eastward after a hard-coded altitude I'll get to that in just a second is reached and then it simply just locks to prograde and flies that's all it's gonna do all I want to do is get to a suborbit okay so let's go over some of the commands here so this is the section we're gonna get get us to our desired out so this is the uh, variable that I have here um, this the set command actually both 
declares and sets a variable. Actually, there's a toggle somewhere in the settings that if, if you want to be more verbose about it, you can actually uh, have a separate statement to declare the variable and then another variable statement to set the value to the variable. I, not going to do that. So this sets, I declares a variable called pitch starting altitude to a thousand. So that's got a thousand there. Uh, then it's going to wait two seconds. That's the, all the wait command does. And then we're going to clear the screen so all of this stuff will disappear. Then we're going to get into, I mean, what kind of launch can you have without having whoops, some sort of countdown. So we got to have a countdown. So it's going to print five, wait a second, four, wait a second, three, wait a second. Uh, that's pretty much all it's going to do. Then we're going to lock the steering to up. Uh, up is, I think, the only uh, constant hard-coded constant that KOS knows, I think. Um, and uh, so that obviously is up, pointing straight up. And then this little part here, the R stands for rotation because I want to take this up and I want to add to it a rotation. And this is pitch, yaw, and roll, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, pitch, yaw, and roll. And then so you can see I'm not adjusting pitch or yaw, but I'm adding 180 degrees to the roll. And the reason for that is because of the way this rocket comes out of the VAB. Uh, up is actually rolled the other way. so. It, it, it wants it so that north is at the top rather than south is at the top, the, the up direction. So if I add a roll of 180 degrees, it matches this. And what this does is it prevents the rocket from immediately after launch rolling 180 degrees, which I don't want to do. Okay, so that's that part. Then it's going to print a statement, locking attitude control. Then again, two, one, and then wait one more second and stage. And then print launch. So pretty self-explanatory and its stages of course is going to engage these two rocket engines okay now we are going to get into our pitching maneuver we're going to wait there's a wait command until a certain condition is met altitude is the altitude of the rocket uh, that it measures from sea level the basic altitude you would see up here if that altitude gets above my pitch starting altitude, which is a thousand. This is all measured in meters. So once the altitude is more than a thousand meters, uh, we're going to go on to the next line, and we're going to lock the steering of this vessel to a heading. Um, heading is both a compass heading and then a pitch setting. So this is a compass heading of 90 degrees, which is due east and a pitch of 80 degrees, which is 10 degrees less than straight up. Straight up obviously being 90 degrees. Now again, having to do with how this vessel is oriented, uh, right when, it, when you put in this heading, it's going to want to orient it so that the top of the rocket, which it sees is this part here on this little bird icon, um, is pointing up. So that means it's going to rotate the rocket 90 degrees the, with the way I had it there. I don't want that to happen. So I've added another roll command or rotate command. So once you go on that heading, but I also want you to rotate 270 degrees, that keeps the orientation of the rocket the way it is right now. So again, I don't want to do any rolling. So it's going to start to pitch over the best it can given the control surfaces that it has. Pitch principal incline just for some space and clarity and gives the message out to the user that pitch east 10 degrees and we're going to wait five seconds nothing fancy here and then we're going to do the lock the prograde part we're going to again print a blank line we're going to print the line locking the prograde and then here what we're going to do is lock steering to surface srf stands for surface prograde again that's a constant that it knows um, it'll just be the surface prograde vector. If you wanted to lock to the orbital prograde vector, you take the SRF off. And again, to keep it from rolling, I've also added on a rotation of 0, 0 to 70 to keep the orientation the same. It's then just going to wait five seconds, and then the program is going to end. And that's it. Okay, so after that, the rocket is on its own. It should have enough speed now that it should just want to stay on the or on the uh, surface prograde vector, and we'll see how this goes. So we're going to exit this. We're going to go to here. Okay. We also need to get our science started, so let's make sure that's all set. So our state putnik, 
Uh, let's start our telemetry report. It's waiting to go. And oh my gosh, that's it. That's all it's got, isn't it? Because I took all the other science off. We'll open up our data window here so we can watch what's going on. And hope, oh, and our contracts, contracts. Oh my golly. Of course, we have contracts to worry about too. Put those right there because we should be uh escaping the atmosphere in this and we should be able to get to this altitude of 120 to 130 kilometers in which case we've got to perform a test on uh one of those strikers okay let's get her going so we got our program loaded into the ship so all we need to do is type run basic sub orbit period and this thing should be off And we get our countdown and launch, we are off. Oh, and by the way, the staging of these boosters will of course be handled by the smart part that's right here. Okay, so we are still over the shore, so there's no telemetry to collect here. I should get this, you know, this booster ready because I will need to do some testing on it to run the test. Okay, it is now pitching over. It's pitched over 10 degrees. It's locked onto the surface prograde vector. And our program, our program has now ended. So from here on in, it's just going to kind of go off a little bit in this direction. I can't pitch over too much. This isn't the oomphiest rocket in the world. I do want to make sure I get to this 120 to 130 kilometer altitude. Okay, there's no reason to keep this open anymore. Oh! That was not done by me, that was done by the smart parts surface, or, uh, staging those SRBs. We are still over the shores. But we should be getting over the water at some point. I'm just realizing I might have a problem with my suborbital trajectory thing. Okay, we are out of fuel because I do not see... I do not see a test. Oh, you just have to have the striker. Okay, all it's got to do is get up to that orbit. Okay, I'm sorry. Haul the striker up there. You don't have to test it. So I don't need this. It just needs to get there. That's cool. Okay, we are now doing telemetry reports here we are now which one's got the most science because i definitely want okay turn anything that doesn't have okay we are f t -t -t space low yes let's turn this one off this one off start tra okay that one's done which one's the next highest this one okay we are now in space that finishes off that contract excellent and we are transmitting the most valuable one which is flying high above the water because we've never done that one before that makes perfect sense that that one is the most value so we'll let that transmit we're just waiting to get to 120 kilometers and that should trigger off this one our apoapsis is 174 so that is good we're definitely going to go well over what we need to 120 there we go contract complete excellent so that should give us a bit more cash as well as the ability to score off some more contracts how are we doing over here if this gets to 18 we can unlock another node so that'd be good too all right time warpy time keeping an eye on this okay we're about oh that one's done whoa 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 start that one so this is transmitting Kerbin flying high shore. So I'm trying to be a little bit more proactive in uh, managing this and not letting it do its own thing. This is nice. It's uh, I'm actually transmitting quite a lot of data. We're at 16.5 science that we actually have in the KSC. We are about to enter the atmosphere, which should give us some re-entry stuff. Nope. No re-entry over the water. Remember before I got this re-entering over the water thing. So far though, things are good. Of course this thing is going to be crashed and destroyed. So any data we have not transmitted by the time this thing crashes into the water will be lost. Okay, oh, 
we just got our plasma black out. This shouldn't last too long. And we might actually... Oh, it is collecting data of some kind. I do not know what. That's probably the re-entry data. So, let's... Uh, oh, we're flying. Okay, I'm just going to let this go. It's going to crash in a moment anyway. Shkabonk. Okay. This is why I'd love to get the parachutes, too. Because with the parachutes... Let's end this. With the parachutes... Um, you know, I can hang out for a while up there and hopefully transmit all of that data. Okay, so contract window's gone. Uh, we are re uh, not enough for another node, so let's go see what other contracts we have available. Do, 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 do. Bases and stations. Oh, no, 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 no. These are the. That's coming up. Yeah, I thought that'd be a little much for now. Cross the belt. Cross the radiation belt. Probably have to go pretty freaking high to do that. Field research. Gather ray. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this one before. I'll have to deal with that another time. A lot of part testing. What's under the SETI? Get a Kerbal up to 18 kilometers. Ah, that is really, 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 really <laughs> tempting. Because I got an idea, but I can see that this episode is already getting pretty long, so I think that idea is going to have to wait for the beginning of the next episode. But in the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.